Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and Blender 4 Beta recently shipped, and today we're going to look at what I think is the most cool new feature in that, and it's something called Geometry Node Tools. First thing you need to understand exactly what geometry nodes are all about, and for that I'm going to use this demo. What you see in front of you, this is entirely powered by Geometry Nodes. It's a demo you can download from Blender.org by the way, but you can come in here, go into Edit Mode, and you can actually draw and create these new clouds. And this entire cloud simulation is being powered by this geometry node network down here. So you can see here, we'll just play the demo. So those new clouds I created, they just show up in the hierarchy. By the way, I could set that to the 50 frames so we can see exactly what we're dealing with. And then come up here, for example, I could do another cloud in there. Let's do another cloud down here. And this node network down here is controlling how these clouds clothes and how these clouds work over time. So boom, you can see you can magically do new things here. This is a common animation thing that you might want to do. And you might think, okay, this is really powerful, but what if I wanted to use it to create tools? So I could create a cloud tool, for example. By the way, if you're wondering how this actually works and how this all works together, this is the node network used to create it. And I am not even going to attempt to explain how it works, but you get an idea of exactly how geometry nodes work together. One of the cool new things they added was simulation. That's the ability to do things over time. Uh, that's what's making these clouds blow up. But now you can actually use this to create modeling tools. So you can actually create tools using geometry nodes. So I'm gonna show you some very simple examples. Again, this requires uh, the beta release. This is available from Blender Builds if you wanna go ahead and check it out. Now, this would not be a typical Blender video if we didn't sacrifice at least one default cube now, would it? So let's grab our cube and kill it. All right, goodbye default cube. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna expand this one out and we're gonna switch over to the geometry nodes tools. So you see down here under the options, we have geometry node editor. And what we're going to do is instead of doing a modifier, which is what all existing geometry nodes are, you now have an option down here to switch to tool mode. And now we're going to create a new tool here and we will call this guy get to the point. That name will make sense at some point in the future. So what you're gonna see here, you've got an input and you've got an output and all of your logic comes from nodes in the middle. So let's say we wanted to go ahead and uh, do a mesh extrusion. So what I could do here is go add a new uh, mesh uh, and then we go to here and then get pick extrude mesh. We'll drop that in the middle and it will automatically pick up. So that is our new get to the point tool. So now, well, let's bring a cube back. So add mesh cube like so, and we can add our tool to it. So where exactly does your tool show up? Well, initially it will show up in edit mode. So go here, edit our object. And you're gonna notice there is this new generic list here. I'll show you how you can put this into categories later on. But what you can do is click there and you will find get to the point. We click get to the point, and what you will see is we just extrude it. Now you've got actually no control over how any of that happened. So let's just undo that guy right there. We'll leave edit mode. And now what you can notice is I can actually take this guy and I can take any of the controls like this guy right here and I can turn them into parameters. And this is super powerful. So now if I do the exact same thing, so I'm gonna go back to my default mesh, switch into edit mode, go back here and apply the tool to it again. This time what you're gonna see is we have control settings. So I can now control the offset for that particular tool. That is pretty cool stuff. So now we've wanted to do another tool here. So come back over here, we'll go down to add, and we will go, oh, first I'm gonna we'll undo that guy, get out of edit mode, because we're gonna keep reusing that. So now what we're gonna do is add in uh, a subdivide. So come here to add, we'll go to mesh, operations, subdivide mesh, and we'll drop that in the middle, and we'll also make this a parameter like so. So as you can see, you can have multiple different parameters at different points in the timeline like this, and you just keep doing this until the cows come home. So you have as many parameters as you want. I come back up here, and let's go ahead and apply this guy. So once again, go into edit mode. We go over to our special menu, and we go to get to the point. So now what you're gonna see is you've got subdivisions, and you've got offsets. So I could do here, we could do multiple different subdivisions. Here we can do offsets, and you'll see how they work together and we can subdivide our surface. We can expose out multiple tools. So I could switch this guy out to four, for example, or I could go back to one, and they work together uh, accordingly. Next, we can do some uh, just outright stupid things. So we've got our subdivided mesh. Let's go ahead in here, go and add a uh, mesh to point. So go mesh operations, mesh to points, drop that in right there. Uh, and then we're gonna turn those points to vertices just because, so again, this doesn't really make any sense, but let's go here uh, and go to, I think it's mesh again. No, it's points, points, points to vertices. We'll drop that in right there. And now let's see what our tool runs. So let's get 
out of edit mode over here. We'll delete that guy there. We will add a fresh cube in here like so. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is again, go back here to edit mode, go down to my tools, go to get to the point, and there you see the result. And here you'll see the operations that work on it. So this is just one quick tool that you could create using geometry nodes, and then you can use this as a tool in your production. So if you had a, a cloud maker, you could do that. So again, if I want to do uh, something really stupid with my points, I could now take my points here and turn them into a um, convex hull. Geometry, convex hull, like so. I drop that in there, and uh, we'll take the same guy. So we'll get out of object mode. We will go back into uh, edit mode and we will now add our new point. And there you see, we are turning our object into a convex hull. Uh, but we can uh, then work on this together, create these really interesting tools using these uh, networks of nodes as an example. And we just saw one of the setups that you could do here. By the way, you can also do this. We've done this entirely for meshes. As we saw earlier on, using it in 2D uh, geometry nodes to make those dynamic clouds. We could have also done this in curve mode to work with curves as well. So that option is over there. So if you wanna go ahead and create something like this, all you need to do, let me just get rid of that node because that one really didn't add to the experience drop that back in there so what all you need to do once again is come down into geometry node switch into tool mode and create a new one now you may obviously not want it to be here this part is a little bit on the clunkier side if you want to go ahead and turn this into an asset what you do is you come up here and you switch to the blender file like so and then you now locate your node groups like this guy right here i'm just going to right click that guy and we will mark as an asset so then what we're going to do is switch over to the asset browser over here so you see like so come down to assets you will find it right here so you can uh, have that asset available right there and then we can also if we switch out of here into current file I can go ahead and create a new asset catalog uh, and we will call this one uh, Mike's power tools like so and then I can actually take this particular asset and drop it in there. So Mike's Power Tools now has that. And by the way, you've got control over it. You can put description, license, copyright, et cetera. So if you're going to share this with other people and export it out, you could set all those properties there. You can also change out the icon used to, to show it. Uh, but now we have this guy in my Mike's Power Tools group in the assets folder. And what you'll notice is immediately it's up here. So now what I could do, again, is go back to object mode. We will delete this guy. So many, so many default cubes died to make this video. Uh, so here we'll go, go ahead and create a new cube like so. Uh, and then now you're going to notice if I go into edit mode, we now have a Mike's Power Tools category and get to the point. And again, you've got fine tune control over the density of it, the tools behind it. And people are going to make some really magical things from this. And this is basically a way of creating uh, editing tools using this node-based language instead of having to go in and you know do Python scripting or C++ scripting or anything. It's going to open up Blender to a whole new world of tools. It's kind of already amazes me what people manage to do with geometry nodes. So geometry nodes for tool creation Mwah. This is a beautiful new feature, and I'm really excited to see what people ultimately do with it. So let me know what you think of it, what you could dream about making. So again, you have all of these different nodes to work with, so you could do things like with texturing. You'll also notice you actually have your get to the point tool here, which I'm self-referencing here, but you can actually string all of your nodes together as other nodes. So you can build node networks here. Uh, you could have it work with textures, materials, um, You've got just an absolute ton of control over here. Uh, you've got a variety of different inputs to work with. Uh, you've got utilities down here. So let's say, for example, you needed like a random value. You could drop that in there. So random vector location for a parameter such as this mesh to points position right there. You can drop that in right there. So you have all of these building blocks to work with to create whatever you can dream up. And again, what people dream up with this stuff is mind blowing. So this is one step closer to making uh, extending Blender even more accessible. And it's kind of getting kind of more and more in the line of what Houdini is all about. And Houdini has never been approachable to me. So a more approachable, maybe less powerful Houdini is a very cool thing. And this is going to make, again, making these tools directly inside of Blender so much easier. So that is a new feature with Blender 4.0, the uh, geometry tools nodes. I think that this is awesome stuff, but I'm curious what you think. Let me know, comments down below, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.